Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Slapshot is a 1977 sports comedy film that was directed by George Roy Hill, and it was written by Nancy Dowd. It stars Paul Newman and Michael Ontkeen. The storyline goes that facing closure at the end of the season, Pennsylvania's pathetic minor league ice hockey team, the Charleston Chiefs, find themselves stuck in a long losing streak. But under those circumstances, and refusing to throw in the towel, the experienced coach, Reggie Dunlap, enlists the help of the club's newest players, that being the Hanson brothers, who specialize in foul play. Now as the revitalized Chiefs return to their winning ways, its star player, Ned Braden, insists on playing fair refusing to goon it up. Will the Charleston Chiefs win the decisive championship game against their feared opponents, the Syracuse Bulldogs? The Charleston Chiefs were modeled after an actual pro hockey club. In the movie, fact and fiction are joined at the hip. The film was inspired by a down-on-its-luck professional hockey club that was based in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Founded in 1950, the Johnstown Jets represented their community in the minor leagues before a rough economy forced the team to fold in 1977, the exact year that Slapshot came out. For two seasons in the 1970s, the Jets roster included a winger named Ned Dowd. His experiences on that squad were of great interest to his sister, Nancy, who happened to be an aspiring screenwriter. She was fascinated by the pro hockey subculture, and she penned an irreverent script about a struggling minor league club in the fictional Rust Belt city of Charleston, Pennsylvania. That screenplay for Slapshot was picked up by Universal Studios, which put George Roy Hill, the Oscar-winning director, behind Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Sting, and a lot of other films, at the helm in the director's chair. Johnstown was then selected as the movie's primary shooting location, although the road game scenes were filmed in an assortment of other cities throughout Pennsylvania and in upstate New York. The main character of the film is Reggie Dunlap. That's the Chiefs player manager. Although Al Pacino expressed a real strong interest in this role, the director chose Paul Newman instead. He continued to state after the film was done that he should have made that movie. He felt like that was his kind of character, a hockey player. The director Hill asked Al Pacino if he could ice skate, and the answer was no. That was all the director needed to look elsewhere for an actor, and he chose Paul Newman. Newman was really a gifted athlete and a really confident skater. He ended up doing a lot of his own skating in the movie, although they used a professional hockey player that served to be his on-ice stunt double in many of the sequences. While Ned was still playing for the Jets in real life, his sister Nancy gave him a tape recorder and asked him to document some of the colorful things that was said by his teammates in the locker room. His teammates didn't seem to mind at all. He carried this recorder everywhere and he just recorded all of the things that they said and the things that went on. He would send the tapes to his sister Nancy and Nancy would turn them into a written page. The movie's mascots, without a doubt, are the spectacle-wearing Hanson brothers, and they were based on a trio of Johnstown Jets teammates, brothers Jack, Steve, and Jeff Carlson. All three of them were originally slated to co-star in the movie together, but when Jack unexpectedly got called up by the Edmonton Oilers, he left the project. He was then replaced by yet another Jet, defensive man 
Dave Hansen, who supplied the fictitious brothers with their now-famous last name. Lots of the actors sustained injuries during the shooting of the film. Even pretending to play hockey can leave you all boogered up. There were numerous torn muscles and damage that was done by deflected pucks during the scrimmages. The accidents became very commonplace on the set. It's said that Slapshot had a real detrimental effect on Paul Newman's vocabulary. This movie has a constant use of four-letter words. When ABC created a TV-friendly audio track for this picture, a censor counted no less than 176 F-bombs in the original track of the movie. Paul Newman admitted that ever since he did the film, he had been swearing a lot more. He said that he got what he would call a hangover from that character, and he simply couldn't get rid of it. He realized he knew he had a problem with this when he turned to his daughter one day and said, Please pass me the freaking salt, except he didn't use the word freaking. Despite the verbal side of this film, the movie quickly became one of Paul Newman's favorite projects that he ever did. He states that he's not very happy usually with the work he does, but he loved this film. He said that it rates very high as something in which he took a lot of personal satisfaction in doing. Paul Newman burst onto the scene in a kind of odd way. He was in a TV movie that was called The Battler from October of 1955. In that film, he was originally scheduled to play Nick Adams, opposite James Dean, who was The Battler. James Dean's death in a car crash on September 30th, 1955, led to them hastily rearranging the cast members for this production. Newman ended up moving into the role that James Dean was to play, and the play went out live some 19 days later, giving him some of the best notices of his career at that time. So James Dean's death ended up shooting him to the top of Hollywood actors fairly quickly. Slapshot was a moderate hit upon its release. It grossed about $28 million over its theatrical run, which placed it at number 21 among movies that was released in 1977. This was well below the grosses from Paul Newman's three previous films that were released, The Towering Inferno, The Sting, and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which all grossed over $100 million. This is a really fun film to watch. If you haven't seen it in a while, take another look at it. You'll laugh all the way through it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.